friends. It feels so good to sit down with you again. Oh, this tea is extra good today. It's this sugar cookie tea and it is so good. Today, I wanted to share with you all the ways that I am able to create a cozy home and cozy atmosphere for myself, especially during the winter months. I've actually been enjoying winter more and a lot of that is thanks to all of these things that I've been doing to incorporate more huga into my life. So I wanna start with kind of defining what huga is. So it is a Danish word that kind of rose in popularity in the UK and then in the US in 2016. The word itself refers to a quality of coziness and comfortable living that engenders a feeling of contentment and calmness and happiness. And now it's regarded as a defining characteristic of Danish culture in general. Huga is the art of building sanctuary and community, of inviting closeness and paying attention to what makes us feel open-hearted and alive, to create well-being, connection, and warmth, feeling of belonging to the moment, to each other, and is celebrating the everyday. So I want to share some of the ways that I have added not only the aesthetic of huga and coziness to my home, but also some of the activities and things that I do on a daily basis to make me feel extra comfortable and just happy and cozy. First, I wanna share ways that you can decorate, um, some decor choices that you can make. First, I would recommend warm tones. That can be with wood, painting or wallpaper, artwork that you hang on your wall. Anything that has warm tones is going to make you feel warm and happy inside. Now, that's not the same for everyone. If you choose to gravitate towards blue tones, like grays and blacks, and whites, and purples, things like that, and that makes you happy, definitely do that. But in in general, warm tones make you feel warm. Colors like oranges, yellows, mustard yellow, burnt orange, red, even like beige, it's not like a stark white. For example, when I think of cozy, I think of like the Gryffindor common room or a cottage in the countryside. And generally the colors in there are warm. I personally gravitate towards dark wood like this, but you might prefer light wood, but wood in general gives off a nice warm and earthy tone. So yeah, anything that just gives off warm heat use the light of candles and fireplaces, things like that, is a great way to start. The next thing you can do is to have extra pillows and blankets and throws or floor pillows, whether that be on a sofa or on your kitchen chairs. Anywhere you have extra pillows and blankets, it's going to feel more inviting and more lived in. Also, it's a great way if you have people over to make them feel invited and wanted in your home by having, you know, extra places for them to sit and just added comfort for them as well. The next thing I would recommend is having a fireplace. Now, I know that's just not attainable if you live in an apartment that doesn't have one or if you don't have the money to buy a fake one, which is what I did but it really does make such a difference. I actually ordered one from Walmart. I think it was like $115. So an alternative to that would be to create a mantle. You can do this by getting some wood at Home Depot or Lowe's and painting it, doing it yourself, um, or you can find them on Facebook Marketplace. I've actually seen some that are really, really cheap, like $25. And you can choose somewhere to set it up. And what I recommend is putting candles on the inside of it. And I'll include some pictures that I found from Pinterest. It's the perfect thing to have in the center of your house where every time you look at it, you feel relaxed. You might take some time to go read a book next to it or just sit there in a moment of stillness and kind of enjoy your day. It's, it's so inviting. And also the candles, or if you have a real fire, place gives off the warm tones as well. Love reading by my fireplace, my fake fireplace. It's one of my favorite things to do in the evening. And then along with that is warm side lighting. So instead of using the big lights that come in your house or big lamps, turn those off get some cheap lamps. You can get them at the thrift store or you probably already have some lamps as well. Pretty much all the lamps that I have, even this one, I got at the thrift store for like $5. But you can use them to create this very warm ambiance. Placing lamps and candles around the sides of the room completely changes the feeling and the mood in the room. There's something magical about turning off the big lights and turning on warm side lighting that is very comforting. 
Also, having plants, inviting nature into your home. Plants are living things. They exude life. And having that life brought into your place where you're living gives you life. At least that's how I feel about it. Whenever I imagine a warm, cozy cottage, I also imagine it being full of so many different plants and vines and flowers. To me, nature gives me happiness unlike anything else. And so being able to invite that into my home brings me so much happiness. If you're not a huge nature lover, then maybe you would not like having so many plants, but I really do think it brings a difference and makes such a big difference in the way a room looks and feels. And then I also recommend getting yourself an item or a couple items that you can look forward to using every single day. For me, that is my tea set. I look forward to making myself a pot of tea every evening and using my fancy teacups instead of just using a regular glass from my cupboard. It's it's my special teacup that I get to use every evening and I always look forward to it. It can be that one thing that you look forward to using during dinner and it just it gives you that happiness of looking forward to like I get to have dinner tonight in my special bowl. It's finding joy in something that's really small but that joy is something that can carry you throughout your day. And the concept of huga isn't about going out and buying all these new things. It really is more about minimalistic living, but that doesn't mean you can't have a bunch of things. You can't have books and furniture and all of that and crazy artwork everywhere, but it should mean that the things that you do have are things that you value. So when it comes to purchasing new items, I would recommend getting them handmade or getting vintage items, thrifted items. The thrift store is one of my favorite places. Literally pretty much everything in my home is thrifted. This is thrifted, this is thrifted, the clock is thrifted, this chair is thrifted, the lamp, and um, this table, some of those books are thrifted. Getting something handmade, not only are you supporting an artist, but it feels more meaningful because someone made that specifically for you, and naturally you're probably going to value it more. Thrifted or vintage items, they have a story, they had a life before you had it, and it brings that life with it into your home. There's something cozy about surrounding yourself with items that have a story and that aren't perfect. Maybe it's a little scuffed or there's a few scratches on it. It reminds me that I can still be beautiful and useful and important without being perfect. Sometimes when I walk into like a brand new apartment and everything is perfect and pristine, I almost feel like I don't belong. Like if I touch something then I'm gonna scratch it and ruin it. But being surrounded by items that are already used and maybe have a few imperfections makes me feel more at ease. And then for lifestyle and activities, one of the first things I have to recommend is books. Have books laying around, not only on your bookshelf, maybe put some on the coffee table or on the sofa so that if you sit down, maybe you're likely to pick up a book and read, but also take some time every day to read. And if you're not a reader, that's fine, but I'm sure there's something you could read, whether that be the news or a nonfiction book or poetry or, or that favorite book from your childhood. Reading allows you to escape into another world. Even if it's nonfiction, you escape into the world of whoever wrote that, whether that be a memoir or biography, you are living in that person's world and letting go and leaving behind your personal world and your worries and your stresses. By allowing yourself this time of escapism, it gives yourself a chance to breathe and find joy in this story, in these other characters. I find it to be one of the most calming things that I do on a daily basis. And if it helps to set a routine, you could choose to do it every morning, first thing after you wake up, or like me, I love to read right before I go to bed. The next thing you can do kind of goes along with that, and that is to have no screen time. Put away your phone and everything and allow yourself time to detach from all of that, from social media, and just the screen in general is not very good for your eyes to be looking at constantly. We all know this, but it's still hard for us nonetheless. I personally like to make my evenings all about huga and I like to turn off my screens. Now, if you've seen my night routine, you do know that I use screens to do some research and learn German and a few other things, but when I'm not doing those specific activities, I am not looking at my screen. It's probably one of the best things that you can do for yourself to make yourself feel those huga vibes, to feel calm because being on social media, you're constantly seeing things that possibly trigger something or stress you out, or you compare yourself to someone and it's, it's just so healthy to give yourself time away from it every day. And then my next recommendation would be to feel cozy, wear socks, 
or slippers, get in some cozy clothes, a nice sweater or some sweatpants and a hoodie, anything that just makes you feel like you can breathe and relax. I often wear blankets as well. I always wrap myself in blankets and walk around and it just, it feels so cozy. Another thing you can do is play classical music throughout your day. Now, it doesn't have to be classical. I gravitate towards classical or jazz, vintage records a lot. I like to play on my record player. I also love to do this to romanticize my life. The other night I was letting my dog out and I had the Bridgerton soundtrack playing in the background and I was like dancing as I took him outside and it just it brings so much joy to me and it, it's like having a little soundtrack to your life. Whether you're doing dishes or folding laundry or cooking, it's so joyful to have that classical music or just soft music playing in the background. Along with that, you could try putting on an ASMR room sometimes when you're reading or when you're cooking and if you don't know what that is, you can get on YouTube and just search ASMR room and then whatever type of aesthetic or ambiance ambiance you want. I often go for a Pride and Prejudice theme or a cozy cottage theme and usually it's just an image with some birds chirping in the background and some light music, maybe some rain falling, whatever you're in the mood for and you can just have that on. I've even put it on my TV before just so that I can have that soothing sound and scenery in my home. Another recommendation would be to drink something warm every day. And I don't mean grabbing a coffee on the go. I mean taking a good 10 minutes out of your day to take a break and drink something that warms you from the inside out. For example, this is, I think, this is only my second cup of tea for the day, but then I'll usually have another one in the evening. And if you can, I also recommend, you know, putting your phone down and just having a moment of stillness while you drink and focus on the things that are going right in your life and that you're grateful for. And sometimes, you know, sometimes there really isn't that much that you can think of, but there's always something. And taking those few minutes to dwell on that while you feel so warm and your drink tastes so good, it's a little moment of magic for you, a little gift for you throughout your day. Another thing you can do every day is light candles. In the morning and afternoon, I love to light scented candles, ones that will make my house smell so good. And in the evening, I love to light tea candles or these ones. I use them to light pretty much everywhere. You can put them next to the bath and take a nice bath. You can sit next to them as you read a book. You can even use them as lighting while you're cooking or baking in the evenings. This is actually one thing that has completely transformed me and my love for winter is having lots of candles. I found a ton at the thrift store one day and I brought them home and I have probably 50 of, oh, they're all burnt out now, but as you can see, I use them quite often, but I love to have them just sitting around on the tables and the desks as I go throughout my evening. Another lifestyle choice you can make is to romanticize the things that you struggle with in the winter. For example, I struggled with the sun going down at like 4.30. That really affected me having so much darkness every day. But this year, I started lighting the candles as soon as the sun goes down and it has completely changed everything. I imagine myself in a period drama because you always see them walking around in the evenings and they use candles, right? There's no light. And so by romanticizing the lack of light, I now enjoy it. I know romanticizing everything isn't the solution to your problems, but there are certain things that you can try to romanticize. Try to find a different way to look at it, a different perspective. I really love period dramas, and so if I can make my life in some way similar to how they live in the dramas, then that makes me happy. Try to find something that you love in media that you expose yourself to, and I'm almost certain that it will help you enjoy something that you might not have previously been enjoying. One of my next recommendations is to do something every day that you can allow yourself to get lost in. Whether that be taking five minutes to draw or paint or knit or crochet or whatever it is that you like to do and allow yourself to forget about everything else. Just focus on that one thing that you're doing. It really is a way to recharge your soul, to make you feel happy. It is so important to take care of yourself and show yourself self-love. By allowing yourself to get lost in something, 
you are loving yourself and you are giving yourself something that you need. After watching this video today, go do something that you can allow yourself to get lost in. Even if you're super busy, even if you are studying for exams or you have a big dinner to cook for your family or there are still five other things on your to-do list, you will be able to do whatever that is better if you are feeling good inside and if you have taken care of yourself first. And that's definitely part of Huga as well is showing that self-love to yourself and caring about taking care of your heart and your soul and your well-being. And then another thing you can do every day is to take a brisk winter walk, feeling that cold, crisp air, and then going back into your home and feeling warm, maybe making yourself some hot chocolate. The contrast of the cold and then going back into the warm is so satisfying and will make you feel so good. Sometimes I struggle with going outside in the cold, but I've actually learned to love the way it makes me feel. It kind of makes me feel alive. And then I go home and I get to have some hot cocoa and it's like a reward. So rewarding yourself for small things like that is another way to make you feel so happy and bring those little moments of joy into your life. Also, you can spend time baking. Baking is such a great way to feel huga because not only are you going to be making something delicious for yourself to eat, but the smells and fragrances will fill your home and it will smell so good. So those are most of my tips that have helped me fall in love with the cold months. Embracing huga and everything I can do to make me feel cozy has truly made such a difference. I would love if you'd be willing to share the things that you do or your most ideal, like cozy night or what makes you feel cozy in the comments. Maybe I'll start implementing some of those things as well. I hope that you were able to feel some peace and calm while watching this. So thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye friend!